All right. So, you want to add Bluetooth to your vintage car stereo and you don't know where to start. I want to talk about the options that we have that are commercially available and require no modifications, but they each have their own drawbacks. Uh, number one, this is actually probably one of the most common, and it's an FM transmitter that plugs into the antenna input. And what it's going to do is use a... Um, you're going to tune the radio and the transmitter to an FM signal that is not currently used in your area. And you're going to get a lot of interference. You're going to get whining and buzzing and clicking and all the horrible things that come with uh, poor uh, RF shielding. And You're also going to get the guy next to you in traffic who is listening to uh, the Dixie Chicks on XM who is also using a very similar setup on his car. So I, I'm not a big fan of those things for that reason. The other, th now there's also a one that doesn't plug into the radio's tuner that also, it just uses its own built-in antenna to hope that the car's antenna catches the signal and bada boom, bada bing. The other option that we have, and there's two different variants of this, there's the cassette tape Mod, um, input device and what it does is that you slide this device into your cassette player and it has a um, a head that's basically a mirror image of the playhead on this unit and what that does is it takes the audio signal from your device and converts it to electromagnetic pulses that um, mimic the magnetic um, pulses coming from a cassette tape now those actually work pretty well. They were the gold standard for adding CD functionality to cars back in the 90s and early 2000s when they didn't have CD players. Um, and cars going all the way back to the 1970s. You could just pop one of these things in, plug in your cassette player, CD player, sorry, and you would have <clears throat> CD sound. And of course it also works if you're gonna use your phone um, or a Bluetooth hands-free device. It's an acceptable solution, and um, it's, uh, they're not terrible, but the, the problem with those is if they're not precision manufactured, and let's face it, in today's day and age, it's hard to find one that is, um, they will have a slight imbalance. You might have a stronger signal on the right channel or the left channel, but overall, they do sound pretty good, I'll admit. There's a more modern version of that, which is literally a Bluetooth module mounted inside a cassette. And it, um, and it does the same thing, but it requires no wires. As a matter of fact, it'll use a, um, <clears throat> uh, a, a little battery pack. So the downfall with those is you've got to charge them with a power source to use them. And uh, eventually that battery will die and then you've got to charge it again. And batteries used in low-cost devices these days are a little iffy, so that battery might not last very long. Um, or, damn it, Oreo. Or <laughs> it could potentially puff up and may even damage your cassette deck. Um, I mean, let's be honest, these are pretty harsh working conditions for any electronic device, especially a battery pack. So I'm not going to be doing that either. There's another option. And it's this. This is a Bluetooth module. This is a self-contained Bluetooth module that puts out a low and unamplified and, and a well, a very mildly amplified signal that's designed to go into a preamp, which is what part of this board is right here. This is our amplifier board over here. And this device right here cost about between seven to twenty bucks with shipping. And this is everything you need to make this happen in theory. Literally everything you need is right here. Um, so this comes with a few, uh, I'll just take these little plugs out of the, there we go. It comes with a couple of different cables here. And it's got a five to 20, five to 12 volt input right here. So that's your power. 
It's got an antenna plug in case it doesn't, in case you're not getting a strong enough Bluetooth signal, you can add an auxiliary antenna to it if you want to. It's made by Drock, D-R-O-K. It's got a little uh, little Omron micro relay. It's funny, I just bought one of these relays because there's there's a couple of different ways you can put this in. There's one guy on YouTube. I got this idea from a guy on YouTube. Sometimes I get great ideas from YouTubers like myself. And he bought one of these modules and he severed the connection. He did this in a Honda, in a Honda stereo, which I believe was made by Panasonic. And what he did was he um, he severed the connection from the the cassette deck head output going into the preamp, like cut it, and then intercepted the uh, audio with this. Now doing that prevents the cassette player from ever working again. Like it'll never work again. The other thing he did was he used the audio cassette. Well, obviously by doing that he used the audio cassette input to get his sound from the Bluetooth module to the to the amplifier so it would work. So you you would select what you would do in his mod in his mod is you would select cassette deck and you would put in a blank tape. Now the blank tape triggers the necessary switches on the cassette player itself to switch the input over to cassette which would allow it to work. I have a, a slightly different approach here. I want my cassette deck to work, period. I, I, I intend to use this cassette. That's why I'm putting so much money into restoring it. Um, so I would rather not ruin my cassette player. What I'm going to do is I'm going to intercept the tuner audio. Now, the tuner can be selected. There's couple of things you need to know on a, on a on a on a cassette deck like this on a, on a on a unit like this in order for the cassette input to be valid this cassette mechanism must be operational it must be functional because what it does is there are little feedback um, sensors or speed sensors that are mounted on both the uh, on both uh, pickup reels and if for any reason this mechanism is not running when there's a tape inserted, it will automatically eject the tape and it will switch the input over to, um, in this case, it switches the unit off because the cassette input is the default off position. So we need to fool the system into thinking there's a tape in there to make it work that way. It, it's a whole big mess. But what if we intercepted the FM receiver? Now, the way to do that is you have to identify where the FM receiver dumps its audio signal into this interconnect board, or depending on how the radio is built. You need to determine what pins on the receiver's connections send the audio to the preamp, or to the amplifier, I should uh, specify. Now, I've already done this. I, I've already determined where, where those leads are, and I think I can make this work. Now, one thing I noticed on this receiver, because I still want the FM receiver, I, I want the AM-FM function to work as well. I don't want to lose that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I came up with a couple of different ways to do this. And now that I have this device in my hand, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute. This has an auxiliary input right here, which means that if this mechanism or if this, if this device isn't turned on, it may in fact allow an audio signal to go through. One way to tell. Actually, it's very easy. So right now, this unit is powered off. Now, if I can, if I take my multimeter, so what, is, what I want to do is I want to be able to turn this off and the FM, trans, uh, FM receiver works. I want it to continue functioning. So if, if these, now the center pin is ground, 
So those should tone out just fine, and they do. Now, left and right, they tone out. Look at this. So what happens is I can just redirect my FM transmitter into this auxiliary input, which will then direct it straight to the output, sends it straight into the amplifier. Now, if I look at the bottom, I can't, it's actually not visible to me, but this relay right here, this is our audio switching relay. I, I literally have one of these on its way from Mauser. I didn't know this device had this function built in. I was going to recreate or create a circuit that when a five volt source is sent over to it, it just switches the input from one to the other, from the, uh, from the FM over to the Bluetooth. This is all built right in. This is seriously the greatest thing since sliced bread. Where the fuck do we put it? That's the problem. There's not a lot of room here. What I'm hoping is I can just pull this, now this little board right here on the, um, on the sensory sound system, the uh, Pioneer FM, whatchamacallit. This board is our, um, our Dolby Pro Logic board. I'm sorry, Dolby Noise Reduction. Dolby Noise Reduction, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say Pro Logic. And what I'm hoping is I can stuff this module right in here, right? And then stick this, now I'm gonna have to do some, uh, some serious, um, protection stuff here. I don't think it's going to fit there because we've got plugs on the top of it, so that's not going to work. We've got to find some room here, and I'm not removing any features. I've got to find a home for it. Now, as for switching the unit on and off without adding any external switches, I've already determined how that's going to happen. Um, what I'm planning on doing in this case is uh, I'm, I'm going to um, take over. There's a mute button built into the body sonic amplifier module. And that, will, that mute button is going to be disabled. And it's going to become the switch for the Bluetooth on off. So where do we stuff this thing, huh? Where... Shall it go? Well, if I put the mezzanine board back, there's not really much room there because the CD player takes up the rest of this space. Um, this board is too wide to go here. It's too thick to go there. The cassette unit takes up all the space down here. So let's see if there's maybe a little bit of space because we no longer need to put in a relay because it's already built right the hell in. So, I mean, that's, that is, that is genius. What if I stuffed it behind the motor, like right in there, maybe against the tuner board? No, because we've got those plugs in the way. Ah, that might work. Now, if I put this guy in here, now again, we don't want to modify anything. We don't want to, we don't want to change the world. We don't want to, we don't want to break anything here. It looks like that might actually work. Maybe. No, that's too thick there. Looks like there's some room back here. And if I play my cards right. I can just stuff it right back there. As long as it doesn't interfere with any of the uh, mechanisms. I might have, you know what I might have to do is I'm going to have to lose these connectors right here. Those are going to have to go away. Um, and what we're going to do is um, we're just going to, yeah, we're going to lose the connectors to reduce thickness. So how do we do that? Well, we grab our hot soldering iron and we just start pulling them off. That's how we do that. So I'm going to plug in my soldering iron and I'm going to go to town. Get some uh, desoldering equipment. 
I have a hot air station at work. That would be ideal. Um, I don't have one here at home. But this is how we make it happen, man. I've got all the wire I need here. I got everything else all ready to go. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff that I ordered, little bits and pieces. I'll probably use it for other projects. I bought like two or three of those relays. So, and it's the same freaking part too. Just, just incredibly wild. So we're going to have to desolder these. I'm going to do that real quick off camera. I'm not going to film that because you don't want to see that. But what's nice here is we've got these cables, which are good to have. These are shielded audio cables. Um, they're, uh, they're kind of a godsend, really. Um, and all we got to do is just strip back enough insulation on these. But by losing these connectors, we can make this fit in an even tighter spot than it was intended to. Um, but yeah, I don't like desoldering. I have like nightmares at night about desoldering things because I'm so terrible at it. I really am. I, I, I'll, I'll be the first to admit there are things that I can do that are, you know, superb. I'll admit when I'm wrong. When, when I have a, a, when I have issues with things, I just, um, I own up to it. And desoldering is not something, usually it's because I have the wrong equipment. And it's not like I learned how to solder yesterday. I've been doing this since I was nine years old. I'm 38, 37. I keep thinking I'm 38, but anyway, I'm not, so. not a great solderer. But let me just try one here and we'll see how it goes. Now, what bothers me about this particular board is it looks the looks as if the that relay was cooked when it was installed. It's a little bulgy. Um, definitely not something you want to see. You don't want to breathe this shit in either. Let me uh, grab a pair of pliers. We'll, we'll put some tension on it. Maybe we'll loosen it up. A little bit at a time. Suck it up. Solder wick works pretty well too, but not as well. Okay, I'll reduce the amount of solder there. I just want to break it free. Okay. okay. There we go. There we are. All right, that wasn't so bad. And what we got to do is we got to solder on our input and output leads. And uh, that'll give us the freedom to move this thing wherever it needs to go. So I'm going to strip back a little bit of the insulation, not much. Just a little bit. Now I chose this module because it has no, um, there are no switches to, do, to worry about. No switches at all. So I don't have to hold a button down to get it synced to my phone. Um, it's, they're pretty simple to use. I'm gonna just kinda reflow and add nice clean solder to these pads. I have something to solder onto. RGL. So ground is the um, ground is ground. White is right. I'm sorry. White is uh, left, and red is um, red is right. Pretty straightforward. But when I saw the video of that guy doing this to his Honda, I'm like, it was a Honda Si. Um, and I'm thinking to myself, how can you own a Honda Civic Si and not have a cassette deck? How how, how does that work? You've got to have a cassette deck. You got to you got a vintage car from the '90s. It's got to have a functioning cassette deck. That's like an unwritten rule. I mean, if you can, if there's a way, if there's a way to do it, you've got to do it. There's no there's no choice here. There's there's no. Well, gee, you know, maybe I can... No, no, no. You've got to do what you've got to do. And I'm sorry, but when you... 
when you're working on a nice vintage restored or, you know, even a resto mod, you've got to have a cassette deck. It's like folks who have, uh, you know, old 1970s Cadillacs that don't have 8-track players. I mean, what are you thinking, man? you got to have an 8-track player on that old Cadillac. That was luxury, man. Part of what makes that car what it is is the damn eight track player. So yeah, I'm a little I'm a little bit on the side of you know keep it as original as possible, but without going nuts. For those of you asking how much money I have in this stereo, well, if you count the two parts machines I sold, the two parts stereos that I bought. I'm into this radio about $500 at this point. And uh, that was um, that was including the Bluetooth modification parts and all the stuff I had to buy to make this happen. But really, the, the least expensive part of this, believe it or not, is the Bluetooth receiver. Now, we have lowered the profile of this module by several millimeters. So that, that gives us a little more freedom as to where it's going to go. So let's take once take another look at so look at that look at how thin that board is you know we've got our input we've got our output so this this cable is going to be routed into the receiver um the the uh or the tuner i should say the tuner in this case this one is going to be routed to the um uh to the um amplifier board and there's actually a spot for it. I'll show you where it, where it is. Okay. So here's how this works. You gotta pull the tuner out. My screwdriver. You know, I got lucky. The stereo, everything is marked. In the old days, when they when they laid out boards and they sent it off to the printer, they would pretty much mark off everything that you needed, to, everything that has a function, every pad, every every chip. They would print what that device was, what IC chip goes there. They would print out the, um, you know, oftentimes what if there was a gr if there was an entire section of the board that was just for, you know the tuner or just for the uh, cassette control, they would tell you what that was. They were very transparent back in the day. They also had repair shops and those repair shops needed that information. So they were very service or friendly in the, in the old days. I'll tell you what they are in a minute. Once I get this tuner out, I forgot how this comes off. Oh yeah, like that. Okay, so this is how we get our tuner off. And, uh, I'm going to pull the shielding off here. And that's going to show us what all of these connectors are. So, is there tape or something holding us on? There's something. Oh, the wire's kind of wrapped around here stuff here okay all right so here's our tuner board now what we're going to do is we're going to sever let me just unplug this no it's stuck in there Okay, we're going to unplug this. There we go. Now, the legend for what these each of these conductors does should be printed right here. So, LGR, from this wire in, so we're going to count. So, LGR, so accessory, SL, 8.5 volts, that's three wires in. Right is number four. So number four, this is our right. Now we're going to cut this. It is a reversible mod. Okay. 
So in case we have to go back and undo this, we can. We're going to just, we just splice these wires. So there's R. G, we're going to leave. That's ground. And L, we're going to snip L. So R is closest to the back and L is closest to the front. Okay. Now what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to splice into these wires. Or what we could do in this case, I think here's what I'm going to do. I'm not even going to, I'm not going to splice into those wires. What I'm going to do, so we're, we need. So I had what I thought was a really good idea at this point, and that was just to um, run the, um, the output from the board to the interconnect board directly. Um, I had found three pads on the board that um, tone out straight to those three wires that we were going to be splicing into. However, for some reason, uh, when I bench tested it after the fact, it didn't work. I could hear sound, but it was very faint. So I think there was some other circuitry upstream from that point that um, was required. Uh, maybe uh, some kind of preamp circuitry or something, I don't know. But maybe it, it boosts the signal a little bit. No idea. Um, so <clears throat> while I end up doing this in the video, um, if I forget to cut any of that out, um, forgive me. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you, you, you don't lose track of what those blue... See, they're all the same color. That makes it a little confusing. Those blue wires to my... Uh, that are that the connectors hanging off of um, those are the ones you want to splice into so the ones coming out of the connector end um, are going to be going to the auxiliary side of your drock bluetooth board the wires coming out of yeah see those pads right there don't use those don't do don't don't fall into that trap like i did um i thought i was being smart yeah, i wasn't being smart the blue wires coming out of the board, uh, the bottom, uh, those are the ones you want to splice the output side of your Drock Bluetooth module into. And again, they're not labeled, they're not colored. Um, one way I remembered it was, okay, the one furthest from the faceplate, the, the, of the three wires that we cut, that's ground, left, and right, the one furthest from the faceplate towards the rear or closest to the back, that is our right signal. The one between the two is ground, and the one closest to the faceplate is the left signal. Um, as long as you uh, you don't get them mixed up, you should be okay. Um, so I'm going to cut out some of this because it didn't work, and then I'm going to probably cut out some of the testing I did um, because that was just wasted footage. So let's uh, let's move on from this. Did a little bit of uh, poking and prodding and testing, and here's what I found, that um, if I switch the audio from these pads over here back to the wires that go into the board, well, guess what? It actually worked. Um, I was able to get the tuner to function, um, but I've rewired it all so that it's all wired the way it was before, but now it's putting it, it's injecting the audio into here. I also took the wires off the back of the tuner board. I, I felt I could do a cleaner job with just um, splicing stuff together here. So, all right, so we're going to plug this in. <clears throat> we're going to put it on tuner FM. I have sound. So we got sound. All right, so the, the uh, Bluetooth module is switching modes just fine. So I'm gonna try it on Bluetooth. Let's see how that sounds. So a little more, a little more brainstorming and I realized that I don't need a switch either. Um, I can actually switch between Bluetooth and tuner right from my phone. I don't need a switch. <laughs> at all um it, it could be it's optional you know i'm going to do this without adding a switch just to reduce the number of wires and complexity 
I do need to come up with some kind of a status LED that can tack into this um, flashing light on the unit itself. But it works. It works exactly as I thought it would. Now we have to tuck everything in and make it look pretty. Let's see what I can come up with. Okay, so we're making some progress here. Um, as far as packaging this module, so I've glued these cables flat with hot glue so that they aren't going anywhere. Um, I have found that I do in fact have some large sized uh, shrink tubing. So what we're gonna do is we're going to encapsulate the module in shrink tubing. I'm gonna have to shorten this a little bit. About that much. So take a little bit off. What we don't have is space. We, we really don't have a lot of space in this uh, in this unit here. But if I shrink this down, it should allow me to stuff the module face down right about here. fits without the shrink tube. Let's let's shrink it down. Let's um I got more of this stuff. So we're going to we're going to shrink it down and see if it'll fit. Um before I do that, I want to do the uh power connectors. Just get those out of the way. Get those done. I may have not given myself enough cable for power. But that's okay. I can um, I can route these this way, and uh, run the power along the back wall. I should have given myself a little more, a little more room. Well, we'll manage. We just need to tin the leads with solder. Or I could just pull power from some other point. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I gotta go the other way. Let's see this, thing. this thing heats up pretty quick, so. There we go. Okay, the positive one was the striped one. Now these um these little modules come with a, a little um push connect type connector, but you know what I'm gonna re I'm gonna reroute power on this. I don't like that. Uh, that's um it's not enough cable, first of all. And uh I tried to find a switched power for the uh, tuner so we could at least turn it on and off if there's, let's say, an, an error and you're driving along and you want to just reset the module, you just shut the tuner off. No, no, no banana. Um, can't do that because the tuner gets constant power. So what we're going to do is we're going to route it from... Actually, I think there's an 8.5. You could probably get power from some other place. At the very minimum, I'm going to need more uh, more power leads. So, what I want to do though, before I go nuts, I want to just I have more of this. I can cut it off. If it doesn't work out. I'll just shrink this down. And 
see see how it all fits together okay see if it fits so we want it face down because uh it's going to sit flat like that and we're going to route our audio cables towards the back here and I will bundle them in a way so that they don't get in the way of any cassette uh, function stuff. Just run the cables that way, stick it like that, and then the CD mezzanine should sit on top like that. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. We're going to cut this back off because we, we still have to connect our power leads. If you ever have to run wire, be it powered or otherwise, um, alongside a board like this, don't depend on the insulation on the wire by itself. You want to put a little bit of shrink tubing over that, just for a little peace of mind. These are sharp. Wouldn't take much for it to pierce. This is a 12-volt line. Just don't take that chance. All right, so I've routed my 12 volt power. Now, just to be safe, because remember, this is 12 volts. It can cause some fucking damage um, if it's gone the wrong way, if it's shorting out against some metal piece or whatever. So I sleeved the entire cable in shrink tube and I routed it all the way around the back here. I then tinned the leads on this because it's going into a push fitting. And uh, let's see how that goes. Now I'm gonna have to um, remove my uh, <clears throat> my shrink tubing here. We knew this wasn't forever. I'm gonna take that off carefully. Just cut it. Now this shrink tubing is perfect for this application. In fact, there are cases where they use a very similar way of um, protecting components like this. Um, you know, this is not, nothing that I'm doing here is what I would call hokey or Mickey Mouse. I don't do Mickey Mouse to anything. I just don't do it because it's just not worth it in the end. You save nothing and it can end up costing you in the end. Everything that we're doing here is pretty much acceptable. Um, you know, I would say, I guess your your definition of what is and is not acceptable is up to you. But um, for me, you know, using um, uh, um, you know cassette adapters to run Bluetooth to me that's Mickey Mouse. That's hokey, and you're going to get you know middling results. You're going to get poor sound quality out of that. Now, this is by no means an audiophile-worthy uh, mod either. Um, so, I mean, we got to at least be realistic. This is going to get the job done. It'll work, hopefully reliably. And uh, we'll have Bluetooth in the car. And it'll be stealthy, which is what I'm looking for. That's what I'm going for here. I want it to be something that you don't even know it's there. You know, the average person walking... Well, nobody's going to know it's there unless I tell them it's there. And I demonstrate it for them. Positive, I uh, use the stripe wire as positive, and that's just going to get shoved into here. Like that, there's a little locking. Uh, I'm really actually quite impressed with the quality of this of this, uh, this board. It seems to be pretty well put together. Um, it worked. It seems to work every time. You know, it seems to work pretty well, as a matter of fact. So I'm uh, I'm actually I'm actually quite impressed here. I, I think this is going to do the trick. I really do. I just got to shrink the tubing. Now, had we gone ahead and potted this with uh, silic uh, silicone or potted it in um, epoxy or something like that. We'd be cussing ourselves out now, wouldn't we? Well, I would be. 
I'd be like, I'd be pissed at myself for doing that. That would be the dumbest thing ever. Why would I do that? This tubing to get the job done. So we're gonna go a little bit oversized. By the way, this is one inch shrink tubing. That's the size that we have here. This is one inch tubing. So in case you're wondering, if you buy this module, that's the size of shrink tubing you're gonna need. So that's big enough. That'll, yeah, that's a little bit, maybe a little too big. It might cause us a little bit of grief, but we're gonna do what we can. Let's again, plug these back in. Okay, now we'll try to find the center here. The, again, a 12 volt short inside is a car stereo. You're gonna get smoke and you're gonna get, you're gonna get a lot of drama. 12 volts is gonna cause some van damage. Oh yes, yes it will. That's a lot of, that's a lot of voltage. Uh, the amperage that's behind this is uh, it's pretty pretty heavy too, um, so that's yeah you're gonna get you're gonna get some lightning. Okay, I think that's pretty adequate right there. What do you think? pretty warm too. Alright, I want to burn it, just, just want to cook it. Okay. So we're going to kind of roll up our uh, audio cables behind the motor for the, or the drive motor for the cassette module deck, cassette deck, whatever you want to call it, module deck. We're going to route our power cord down here. And we're going to stuff this little guy right in there. Okay. And uh, I'm going to wrap these around this connector. I could have shortened the audio leads, but I decided to give myself a little bit of room just in case I had to change my plan. See, I hadn't really planned on mount. I didn't know where this was going to go when I started brainstorming this. I figured it was one of those things that I'll just kind of figure out as I go. And, and that's kind of where I'm at now. I think I figured out where everything's going to go. And look at how nice and packaged that is. Look at that. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I'll probably shrink that a little bit more to make it nice and tight. Okay, so um, here's where we're at. <laughs> now, I've got it all installed. Everything's working. It's been tested for several hours by the, by, the, by this point. And I'm pretty confident that this is going to work pretty well. As far as range, when it's all assembled, um, I can walk upstairs and just about round the corner into the kitchen, and it's still connected to my phone. So the need for adding an external antenna may not be, may not be necessary. Um, if I have to, I can at a later time. I, it's a pretty easy thing to do. There's a connector on that board for a, a mini antenna connector. And um, you just run a wire out to the front and be wrap it around the faceplate internally. It's all doable, totally easy to do, uh, but doesn't seem to be necessary at this time. <clears throat> Performance wise, I'd say the sound quality is pretty good. It's better sound quality than you'll ever get from an FM, um, an FM uh, broadcasting type Bluetooth module, and it's way better than anything you'll ever get from a cassette adapter, be it Bluetooth um, or just an auxiliary style um, cassette adapter. Uh, the sound will be balanced between the two channels perfectly. You'll get no interference, and it's you're going to be happy with this result. I'm very, very um, convinced of that. The operation, uh, because we didn't add any switching functions, let me rephrase that, because we didn't switch it on and off with a, with a separate push button, like the mute button modification I was going to do, because of that, it powers on with a vehicle ignition. 
Whether the radio is on or off, it is always on. Um, that could be good and bad. Um, I might rethink this. I, I, I'm actually thinking of, I'm going to try to find a switched 5-volt source. Um, and uh, see, I, I think there might be a switched 5-volt source going into the tuner. I know there's an 8.8, .8, but it doesn't appear to be switched. It looks like it's constant power, so... Um, if you have to reset the module for any reason, you've got to shut the car off. I don't like that. Like I said, I'm going to try to rethink that part of this. Um, I just need to do some poking and prodding, and once I find a new source, I'll just, I'll move my positive lead over to the new source and, and be done with it. It should be pretty simple. Uh, the reception is pretty good. Um, I'm able to walk around the basement, uh, with my phone and it doesn't disconnect. If I go upstairs, um... Right as I round the corner into the kitchen, it uh, it starts to cut out on me, using my phone. So let's demonstrate how this works, and I'm going to do, um, I can actually use some of my own videos as a, as a sound source, without worrying about copyright bullshit. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it on FM Tuner, and we get static. So I'm gonna I'm gonna load up one of my videos, and uh, we're going to demonstrate that. Here we go. Okay, so after following Tim Allen's wiring. So what I've got to do is I've got to go to my Bluetooth module on my computer. I was able to get my stereo up and running. In fact, here we go. And we have sound. Amps are turning on. I'm getting it shows up as Drock BT. System, everything should go. Um, before, uh, before somebody mentions this, yes, this is not All right. necessarily... Unfortunately, the Bluetooth module in this computer sounds like shit. Uh, <laughs> if I connect my phone to it, it sounds crystal clear. It was used in the mod that MC can use them. And, uh, oh yeah, the chassis up here. Yeah, it sounds pretty bad. But there it is. Alright. Now, here's the thing. If I want to switch to cassette, for example, um, and I put in a cassette, let's just find one like uh, maybe... Let's try this one. So, you can still hear my voice over that. The problem with that is, um, obviously, if you don't, if you're just trying to drive down the road and you switch modes, you have to consciously disconnect. So there's only one you have to, connector, but that's okay. You have to disconnect it. Let me shut it's myself the off here. Same you got to disconnect it manually from your device. And then the relay will click over and switch the audio input to the tuner. That will be solved if I can find myself a switched 8.8 .8 or... There, there, there seems to be a 12, 8.8, .8 and 5 volt rails in this system. And 8.8 .8 seems to be used all over the place. So, yeah. Um... One more thing we can look at, you know, we'll we'll, uh, we'll get there, we'll get there. But this is something I would put in my car tomorrow without hesitation. There are always rooms for, there's always room for improvement and different ideas. Um, but uh, I think ultimately we just need to find a switched uh, positive somewhere in the system and see if it works any better. Well, that's all I got for now. Uh, thank you for watching. And um, again, I'm very happy with how this turned out. If you want a stealthy Bluetooth module in your car, this is one way to do it. And um, and I think that it'll uh, it'll last a good long time. Um, you know, like if you've got your factory stereo, you want to keep it in your car for aesthetics purposes. And let's say the cassette deck is completely roached out and the CD player doesn't work. And you don't want to fix all of those components like I did. Like I repaired everything that was wrong with this system. 
If you don't want to go that far into it, I respect that. Um, you, as long as your amplifier and your control panel works, you can have this mod in your car. And, and even if the amplifier doesn't work, you can strip all the guts out. And there are poor, little miniature amplifiers you can buy for these. And you can get it to a basic level of functionality just using the wiring harness. Um, this is all doable on any car stereo. Uh, the, the module is so small, all you really need, let's just assume everything inside here is garbage. Tear it all out, put a miniature amplifier in there, get your Bluetooth module in there, and route your speaker wires where they need to go, left and right. And, uh, you know, you might be able to reuse your volume pot to control volume levels, which is something that I would recommend. Um, maybe, leave the, maybe leave the controls in place, and you can at least have a power switch, you can have your volume control. Um, this is so easy to do, and you couldn't do this 10 years ago. You know, 10 years ago, if you had a classic car and you wanted to keep the factory stereo in there, there was nobody making micro Bluetooth modules. There was nobody making, you know, the, the, the stuff you need to make this happen, it didn't exist. So you'd pull that stereo up and you buy yourself one of those Chinese little fake vintage stereos. Hopefully you kept that old stereo and you can now build your own. It's so easy. Um, in this case, we were able to salvage all the original functionality, so we can still play our Teddy Bear's Picnic by Jerry Garcia. We can still play our In Excess. We can still play our... Um, I had a Spira Gyra CD in here somewhere. <laughs> we can still play all that stuff on CD, cassette. This thing has more audio sources than a modern audio system in a modern car. It's got CD, cassette, Bluetooth, AM, and FM. How cool is that? Come on. Well, thank you for watching, and have a great day. And by the way, um, I'll try to put links for the stuff that I used um, in, the, uh, in the description. So if you want to do this yourself, you should be able to do that. The one real problem I found was this Drock Bluetooth module. Um, and I'll mention this in a minute um, in the next section of this video. I find it hard. It's hard to find the correct one. The one you need for this to work without any additional parts is the one with the relay built in. Um, so make sure you... Um, I really don't, I can't really provide you any guidance there. Um, but you've got to find one with an auxiliary. And it has to be the exact, it has to be this module because the size of the board is critical. If it was a millimeter larger in any direction, it wouldn't fit. I mean, it's really, the tolerances are that close. So you want to make sure you get the exact one I have. And there's no part number on it. So you're on your own uh, when it comes to that. The one that I ordered, um, it was supposed to be one without an auxiliary. I didn't, I wasn't thinking ahead, and I bought the one without the auxiliary, thinking, I mean, why, why do I need that? Well, this is why. <laughs> so, I, I, I'm going to have to just give you guys uh, best of my best wishes in finding the correct module. I hope it's still in production. Um, but even if you can't find that module, it can be done. So don't don't let that discourage you. You just have to buy a relay. I'll put a link to the relay that I that I that I was going to use, and you're on your own for figuring out how that works. I'm not providing any assistance on that. But if you do need a relay, you are going to have to have an auxiliary power switch, um, or you can um, you can repurpose that mute button. Which again, you're on your own. Um, I I don't provide that much level of support but i will at least tell you it can be done and here's roughly what i did and how i could how i would do it so anyway happy listening have a great day all right so i've come to the conclusion that i'm i'm gonna have to add an antenna so um what i would suggest doing is go on ebay buy it like a an antenna from a chromebook or something um it's just a piece of wire with a little coaxial looking connector on the end of it and uh, you're going to run that wire maybe wrap it around the face of the radio um, you know once it's all fully assembled you can wrap the antenna in a circular fashion around the perimeter of the front of the radio 
adhere it with uh, maybe double-sided tape or something. And then when you put the face plate on, it won't go anywhere. Um, so I walked to the other side of that door right there, and it started to break up a little bit. So um, the antenna would be a... I think that's a good idea to have. Um, and you're going to connect that antenna to the uh, Bluetooth module before you shrink tube it. And then maybe secure it in place with a little bit of hot glue, high temp hot glue, just so that it doesn't vibrate loose. Um, I think that would be the one thing I would change. I, I actually did look at a couple of different power points. Um, there is an 8.8 .8 volt that I believe is switched, not with the tuner, but with the system itself. And you can tap off that 8.8 .8 volt uh, wire. It's, it's in the bundle of blue wires. Find one of the one of those puts out 8.8 .8 volts. Maybe power off of that versus straight into the accessory lug on the on the amp board. Um, that way, at least you can shut the receiver off, or the the Bluetooth module will be powered on and off with the radio, rather than the vehicle ignition. So when I have it apart again, I'm going to look at maybe rerouting my power wire, and then. Um, and that should solve that issue. See, I don't really want that Bluetooth module on when the radio is off. I think it just makes common sense. It doesn't have to be that way, but, you know, if I have a choice, I'd rather go with that. Because the voltage range of the Drock Bluetooth module is fairly wide, um, you can safely run it on 8.8 .8 volts. Um, no question. I, I have no reason. There's no reason why you can't do that. Um, you can run it as, on as low as 5 volts, um, as high as 12 volts. 8.8 .8 seems like a nice little sweet spot. So with that all having been said, um, I wish you all the best of luck in modifying your stereos. I've given you what I've done, and uh, I'd love to see what you guys come up with on your own. Until then. So it looks like today's success was actually something of a happy little accident. You see, the module that I paid for isn't the one I got. The one I paid for is this one. See how it doesn't include an auxiliary port, which is in the relay, which is what makes this all very possible. Yeah, it's kind of like that. There is no relay on the one I bought. So, um, but the one I received was exactly the one I wanted. Now, they actually sell that one as a standalone module without the plastic case, and I can show you all what it looks like. Um, it's this guy right here. Now, they don't list an actual part number, but this is what I ended up getting. Oops, what I do? This is what I ended up, this is what I received. And this is the one that is currently unavailable. Wild. Um, but hey, you know what? We uh, we we have a way of making it work, whether we got that one or not. The other one, the, I mean, if I had the you know the one I actually paid for, um, which was actually cheaper than the one I wanted, <laughs> in a weird freaking way. Um, if that was the one I had received, um, I have a plan B to make it work. But anyway. And that's all I got for now. Till then, enjoy your Bluetooth audio.